Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, our supercharged Silverado's back in the shop, but this time, well, it's a winking wonder. Brian, we got a headlight problem. Really, dude? We're doing a headlight job? You think it'll be that easy? No, Never. absolutely not. We got new headlight, we got new assembly, we got everything. You know what we have? We have a short, man. Tech Garage fashion, difficult electronics, a short. I'm not going to bring you something easy. Uh, of course not. You know what? This can be an expensive project to fix because people tend to throw capsules and new bulbs at it and bulb after bulb. All of a sudden, you're out all this money and you never really addressed the root cause. So we need a proper tech garage diagnosis here. Boy, you're talking just like an experienced tech. Root cause and strategy based diagnosis. You got to love it. It all starts with a schematic. Listen, on today's vehicles, you can't go in there and start poking wires. I hope this is power ground. I hope red's hot and I hope black's ground. No it doesn't work that way. So we got a schematic. I'm already ahead of you, Brian. And guess what? It looks like it all starts at the fuse. Yeah, absolutely. And right here in the engine bay, we've got the fuse cover off. Here's the engine bay fuse panel. You just do a little index search here. And number 17 is the low beam right side fuse. It's a 20 amp. It's located right up here by these relays. I've tracked that down. I can see it right here. And that's the guy we're going to be messing with here. Yeah, absolutely. But we can even take it one step further. You can pull up the schematic right there. And, you know, we've read schematics here before. And just systematic approach, we can basically determine where the short is. And you can see it all starts right up there. There's a relay at the top. And that relay has two sides. On the left side of the relay, terminals 85 and 86. Well, that goes down to the body control module. That's the actual control side of the relay. Now, that control side is going to pull that relay in over on terminals 30 and 87. Well, when we do that, that's direct power it's fed through your fuse over there, Brian, and then it goes down to terminal A of the light, and then B goes all the way down to ground. So what we can tell is that we're blowing that fuse, the one you said there, and we can determine that the short's located between terminal A and up between that fuse. So it's between me and you over there, Brian. I'll tell you what, that is a fancy, very fancy way with lots of numbers, lots of letters, trying to track it down on the chart. I appreciate you, but out in the driveway, I'm not so good at that, I got to tell you. So what I'm going to do, pop this relay out of the way so you can see what we're doing. The camera can get a good look at it. Here is the culprit, fuse number 17, it's the 20 amp we referred to. I'm going to pull this guy out and we should be able to tell it's blown. Sure enough, let me hold it there so you can see it, that's blown. So rather than throwing more bulbs and more expensive stuff at this, let me just take a few pennies, take a new 20 amp fuse set it down in and with these lights on this guy should blow and that's going to validate a short so let's see what happens come down there it was buddy Ooh, pop immediately there, that verifies the short right there so now we got some investigation to do and figure out where the short is in the system uh, well yeah. our truck has a short brian what does that mean and how are we going to find it yeah absolutely i'll tell you what it is can be tricky to chase it down it really helps to have the right tool for the job and you got something pretty cool here yeah this is fancy i mean what is a short we'll talk about a little bit later but you got to get to work on the truck so i'll tell you what we're just going to actually substitute the fuse let's just pretend that's the headlight fuse got it yep all right so i take that out i have a cool little tool here you can and put some prongs in there, but this makes it so much easier awesome. for us. So that's the fuse. So what's happening is I'm actually going to take a circuit breaker. Now a circuit breaker is nothing more. I'll show you that in a little while too. It opens and closes when those amps start running too fast and it gets hot. So I'm going to click that right there. Yep. So now that's taking the place of the fuse. Yep. Cool. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. Now here's the confusing part. What's going to happen is I have 12 volts going here and then it goes to the headlight. Well, instead of going to the headlight, I'm going to take that 12 volts and I'm going to go directly to ground. Bad thing. Bad idea. Amps run so fast to find the path home that it's going to create heat and the heat's going to open up that circuit breaker. So if I go across this right here and I hit ground, bam. There's get a short. An audible cue. And an audible warning. Pretty cool. Super helpful when you're at home, you're working in the driveway in your garage by yourself, trying to chase down a short, you get that audible signature, you got a problem. However, most of us that are old school and not fancy electricians in the driveway use the dummy light. Yeah. It could be because we're dummies, but let's show us how, how to test with this. Just as good. Yeah. So I'll take this one. We're going to put it in place of the fuse. Same thing. Okay. Now, the cool part is it's not lit. Everything's fine. But when I short it, I run the amps to here. The light is going to act as the load, basically as your headlight. It's going to become the headlight. It's going to become the headlight. Perfect. So I go down here, I hit that. This time, light's on. There you go. Wow. Guess what? Short verifies. goes away. Yep. Verifies the short. You know what? You hook that up to your truck over there, Brian. You get to digging. Watch that light. When that light goes off, 
Bingo, you I'll, found it. I'll keep the lights on for you. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about a short. We have a couple types of shorts, and if you go to this graphic, there's three circuit faults. The first one up there, well, that's an open circuit. Everybody knows that one. You open a switch, you got an open circuit. Nothing's flowing. Now, on the right there, there's two. There's a short circuit, and there's a grounded circuit. Think about copper to copper, two wires touching, and then on the grounded circuit is probably what we have on the truck because it's blowing the fuse directly. Think about copper to steel. It's touching steel. And that's what I'm doing on the board. I'm going from here to ground, bam, direct short. Now, what's our protection? Well, on our pickup truck, we have a fuse. You saw what happened when Brian put it in there. Well, it was pretty evident. He went over here, he turned on the switch, the power flowed. So I'm gonna make the power flow and bam, instantaneously, the fuse blew. Now, some circuits have what's called a circuit breaker. That's what our finder was. There's a circuit breaker located right here. Now what I can do there, the amps run so fast it gets hot, the little bimetallic strip opens up and it opens the circuit. So I can come over to this one right here and I can touch this and when I touch it, you see that open up? Bam, instantaneously. Then it gets cold, it closes and then it completes the circuit. That's all fine and dandy, then it runs. So mechanical loads, you may have a big amp draw opening that up, some things like that, window motors, seats, use a lot of circuit breakers. Now. Last but not least is our fusible link. This is pretty cool. This is four wire gauges, smaller than the wire it's protecting. If it's a 12 wire, 13, 14, 15, 16, that would be about a 16 gauge wire. So it's smaller. So I have the big one in my hand and I have the small one here. So something has to give. We don't have a fuse. This is why it's so important that Brian fixes this car right and uses a fuse protected circuit. You don't want to put a big fuse in there. It's not going to help the situation. It's going to cause this. So I'm going to touch this and when I touch this, what's going to happen is Oh, there it goes, just like that, instantaneously. That's how fast that electricity flows through there. You don't want that to happen. I'll tell you what, the smoke clears, but let's check in with Brian. Well, proper diagnostics when you're dealing with electrical gremlins, in this case a short, is to start at the source, the load, and work backwards. You're looking for any kind of obvious disconnects, bare wire, burn marks, any tracks like that. When I look at the capsules right here in the back of the headlamp, Visually looks okay. I see the wiring harness is loose. That probably should be anchored. I'm a little concerned about that. But when I come up right here to the elbow, you can see right here, there's a crimp and there's a copper strand actually hanging right out of that wire. It probably rubbed bare right on the steel deck of the airbox mount. That would be the short. Electrical power comes in, passes through, can't make it to the headlamp, is shorting out right on metal right there, a grounded source. So I think that's gonna be our problem. Now, to verify that, over at the fuse panel itself, we've got that dummy light hooked up, just like we had on John's board. That's assuming the load. It's pretending to be the headlamp right now. So when I pull this out in this crimped, cinched wire right here, I may get that load to go off, which tells me we're coming back to complete. So let me try to wrestle this guy out of here where it's crimped. You can fight and pull a little bit. And I don't know how it got crimped, but it is absolutely cinched down in there and you can see it. And so there we go. That is flat out damaged wire. That is absolutely the problem. So we've got all the appropriate tools right here. You've seen us do wire repair a million times. We'll heat shrink it, we'll solder it. John, we're gonna get this truck back on the road. I feel really good about yeah, it. Yeah, no doubt about it, Brian. I mean, you know, if you got the wire, you got the thing. Shorts are a tough thing to find. I got a fuse over here. If it's out, we can pop it back in. The headlights will work. We'll get that all buttoned back up. But wire yep. repairs are huge. You have to go through there, make sure that the connection's good, the soldering's good. Just like you saw, as easy as to touch that ground, bam, we got a problem. I mean, yep. it's an instant short. So Absolutely. go ahead and do that.